Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Please stop. The Bible says that same Spirit, that there are many things that He does in the life of the believer. And among them, Paul is teaching them by revelation that the Holy Spirit can help our infirmity. The word infirmity there was not accurately translated because it would look like sickness. The word there should be limitation, not just bodily or um, maybe some kind of biological deformity. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our limitations. That every time a man is limited, spiritually, financially, organizationally, you are calling for the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But that rule number one, you must come to a point where you acknowledge your limitation. This is not, this is not some kind of demeaning who you are in Christ. It's a state of acceptance and admission that except God helps me. Now you understand the scripture. It is by thee that I run through a troop. It is by my God that I leap over a wall. He took out time to emphasize the basis for his results. Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. John chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. He says, for no man can do these miracles and accept the Lord be with him. There are results that you cannot get alone. Except the Lord be with you. In fact, there are dimensions of results in this kingdom that implicate you immediately that you have done business with the realm of the spirit, whether diabolically or genuinely. But out of the assistance of the realm of the spirit, there are heights you cannot attain. It is not given unto men. Whether it is Janus and Jambers or Moses, turning a rod to a snake needs power. Whether it is by God or by magic, in either ways, there has to be a partnership with the realm of the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because there are people in this conference who this year you will command this very strange order of results in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will not only celebrate what God is doing in the life of your man of God and his dear wife, but that you will access a potent secret. By media, when you look at your life, People will have to call you and say, tell me the truth. Is there anything you need to open up to me about? Because I do not understand the you of January and the you of now. What suddenly happened? When they looked at Saul, they said, when has Saul become a prophet? What happened to you? We knew when you left home helplessly, clueless. With no, if you were that much of a prophet, why did you have to look for a donkey for three days? That now you are returning with precision and even prophesying. Let me speak over someone. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I decree and declare by God who helps men and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, you will access superior help from the spirit and begin to command results in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit. Behind the exploits of great men in the kingdom is the help of and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unassisted by the spirit of grace, you cannot produce results that is consistent with the might and the power of God. No man can do these things except God be with him. No man can do these things except God be with him. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word following. You read from scripture and you read even through modern history. All of the men and women, especially within the church circle, who were mightily used by God in their generations. They were men and women, some uneducated, some weak. Some came from backgrounds of all kinds of things. Regardless of those limitations, you listen to their story. The punchline in their story is when they encountered the spirit of God 
called the Holy Spirit. At that point, things began to shift in their lives. Ordinary women encountered the Spirit of God. And some of them, though naive, though uneducated, inexposed, he began to help them and they commanded levels of dominion and power that was global, regardless the limitations that came with their generation. Let me tell you one truth. There is no describing how far the Spirit of God is able to take a man and to help a man. I am saying it to you today. If you ever see anybody that you admire, whether used by God in ministry like your man of God or in business, any dimension of kingdom exploit, provided it is revealing Jesus, the signature of the Spirit must be there. By this teaching, immediately God is telling someone, if you don't give up on your strength, you will only recycle last year, this year. Regardless what prophecy comes, by ignoring the Holy Spirit, you will abort the potency of the word. The Bible said the seed was the word, yet it still died because of the soil it came upon. Are we together now? I learned this very early, how helpless a man can be in ministry. Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry struggling from pillar to post, trying all kinds of formulas in isolation to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. And they find out that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. The world is too busy, too selfish, and too wicked for people to dedicate their attention to you. It takes a force that is not human to coordinate people to look at you, know you love, no, no. Except you do not, you've not lived long enough in this world. What will make a man wake up from his house and think about you and call you and say for the rest of your life, I want to bless you. That man who wants to bless you has relatives who are in need. It does not just happen. Listen to me very carefully. You are a man of God just because you are sincere and a person of character. It's not enough to make people leave their homes to come and to submit, to sit down, to listen and to learn. No, no, no. How about resources? It is one thing to have your skill like Peter and you will be at the sea and yet you will not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need a superior dimension of help. It is not because you are in Abia. It is simply because there is a dimension of grace and help that you have not accessed. This is my assignment tonight to introduce you to take away struggling and weariness and bring us to a point where you are empowered by a dimension of sufficiency that you will walk out of this meeting tonight rejoicing knowing that every prophetic word that came from the man of God to you was spoken because he expected that in receiving it you will honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make it come to pass. If Jesus, the son of the living God, did not ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, as the word incarnate, he made himself so helpless, the Bible even said, of no reputation, and he would speak again and again by the Spirit. The Spirit was behind the mighty things that Jesus did. A carpenter's son who became the savior of the world. In fact, the Bible even says, if that same Spirit that raised him, raised him, that body was lying down there and the spirit of grace came, raised him back to life again. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit largely and even those who talk about the Holy Spirit only focus on his power. And they do not even care about a relationship to understand the dynamics of his help. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the most classic scripture that talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. This was a statement by Jesus himself. He said, but you shall receive power after. Somebody say power after. The sequence matters. Power after. Power is only relevant when it comes after. Not power before. Not power during. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. 
Wisdom after the Holy Ghost. Miracles after the Holy Ghost. He must precede them all and he must be greater than them all. But here is what we do. Power through or by the Holy Ghost. We are not interested in the relationship. I hear you hold power to heal the sick, to open up doors, to bring finances. Can you borrow me that power so I can shine while you stand? I don't need you. I just know that something about you can make me powerful. But follow the protocol. Power after. Power after. Check this against your, the, your Christian pursuit. If your power, your quest for power is before the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you are already at the corridors of compromise. Mm -mm. When God calls you, he does not give you power. When he calls you, he gives you himself. He said, come, follow me, not follow it. Follow me. When God calls you, he does not even give you an assignment. Your calling is to God. Your mission is now to the world. When he calls people, he does not call them to do things. He calls them to follow him. Follow me and I will make you. When I make you, I now send you. The empowerment is at the point of being sent, not being called. You see, when he calls you, you don't need power. You need humility to learn. When he sends you, he now sends you with power. Most of us have been called, but we have not been sent. And the reason is you will know you have not been sent because the power that backs up your being sent has not been given. But the itch to go, it is true that your calling is genuine, but have you been sent? He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? The plethora of lack and insufficiency is proof that the door has not been opened for you. That means you should stay, follow me, not follow it. I don't know if God is speaking to someone. 